gonna give the Lord the highest praise. Lord, we thank you for being our God and Savior. We worship. How many come to worship the Lord? How many come to worship the Lord? How many come to lift His name? He's worthy of all the praise. We worship You. We worship You. Will you raise that? We worship. Come on, say it for yourself. Lord, we worship. Lord, we adore You. We worship. We worship you, we worship you, hallelujah, clap those hands and praise him, clap those hands and praise him. Clap those hands and lift him this morning. Come on, how many know God is great? He's greatly to be praised. He's our everlasting Father. He's our strength. He's a very present help in times of trouble. And we bless His name. You are my strength. Strength like no other. Strength like no other. And you reach us to me. You are my strength, strength like no other, strength like no other. It reaches to me. Will you help me say that this morning? You are, you are my strength. Strength like, strength like no other. Strength like no other. And it reaches, reaches to me. Come on, say it to him this morning. You are, you are my strength. Strength like no other. Like no other. Come on, say Strength like no one, and it reaches, reaches in the fullness, in the fullness of your grace, in the power of your name, you lift me up, you lift me up. In the fullness, in the fullness of your grace, in the power of your name, you lift me. Up. Hallelujah! Lift me up. You are, you are my strength, strength like. Strength like no other, strength like no other, and it reaches, reaches, hallelujah, you are, you are my strength, strength like no other, strength like no other. And it reaches, reaches in the fullness, in the fullness of your grace, in the power of your name. You lift me, hallelujah, you lift me up in the fullness, in the fullness. Of your in the power of in the power of your Jesus, name. you lift me up higher and higher, higher and higher. You are, you are my strength, strength 
like no other. Strength like no other. Strength like no other. Strength like no other. And it reaches. Reaches to me. He's the Prince of Peace. You are my peace. You, you are, are my peace. peace. Peace like no other, peace like no other. It surpasses all understanding. Peace like no other. And it reaches, reaches to me. You are my joy. You are my joy. Joy like no other. Joy like no other. Unspeakable and full of glory. And it reaches. reaches to me. Come on, if the Lord has kept you all year, raise your hand. You are my strength. You are my strength. Kept me all down through this year. Strength like no other. Times I didn't think I was going to make it. Strength like no But somehow you made a way. You made a way. You made a way. If the Lord has been your strength through your trouble, say, You are my strength. Found out that you are the only one. I found out that you are my only help. I found out that you are my only source. I found out that you're my only strength. Reaches to me. It reaches to me. It reaches to me. your blood to reach me reaches to me yep that's why we celebrate him that's why we magnify him that's why we adore him it reaches to me it reaches to me. It reaches to me. St. Luke's Gospel, chapter number two. My, 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 Oh Lord, oh Jesus. You've been my help in times of trouble. You've been my peace when chaos is all around me. You've been my provider when no one else could help. And you've been my strength when all my strength was gone. Cause I heard you declare that when I am weak, that's when I am strong. Reaches to me. It reaches to me. Lord, it keeps on reaching. Lord, you keep on loving me. St. Luke's Gospel. Oh, my. Thank you for healing me. Thank you for healing me. Thank you for healing me. Thank you for saving me. Thank you for providing for me. Thank you for protecting me. All down through this year, God has been good to us. All down through this year, He continues to show us His strength. And we adore Him. In the name of the Lord. Somebody clap your hands and praise Him right there. Clap your hands and praise Him right there.
Come on, praise him. Come on, lift him this morning. He's worthy of the praise. Hey, hey, I say he's worthy of the praise. When you think about how he's brought you, how he's kept you, how he's made a way, he's worthy of the praise this morning. Thank you, Lord. How many found out that can't nobody do you like Jesus? Can't nobody do you like the Lord? He reaches to you. When you can't get to him, he know how to get to you. He reaches to you. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord this morning. I tell you, if you praise him early, you can beat anything later. If you give him what he's due right now, no matter what the devil has in store up the road, you'll have the strength, you'll have the courage, you'll have the power, you'll have the anointing, you'll have the favor to meet whatever you got to face. Because Lord, I'm praising you right now. I'm not waiting till the battle is over, but I'm shouting right now. I'm not waiting to see it. I already believe it. And as I believe it, it shall come to pass. For your word has declared that the word that has gone out of your mouth shall not return unto you void. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. St. Luke's Gospel chapter number two somebody feel like praising him somebody feel like praising him today somebody feel like lifting him up this morning somebody realized that if it had not been for the Lord come on if you're gonna come on with it don't play with me thank you Amen. Let me see, can y'all catch this? Stay right there. Let me see, can y'all catch this? Joy to the world, the Lord has come. Let it receive her key. Let every heart prepare him room and heaven and nature sing and heaven and nature sing and heaven and heaven and nature clap those hands Here we go. Joy. Joy to the world. The Lord has come. Let us receive her key. Let every heart, let every heart prepare him a room. And heaven and nature sing. And heaven and nature sing. And heaven and heaven and nature Come on, clap those hands and give him praise. Joy to the world. 
I have joy, 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 I have joy. Amen. St. Luke's Gospel, chapter number two, verse number one. It feels good in here this morning. Somebody feel like praising him. I think I got the right spirit in here today. I've got some praises in here. I'm feeling mighty good down in my sanctified soul this morning. <laughs> Amen. This is the day that the Lord has made. Somebody look at somebody and say, I will rejoice. And I will be glad in it. St. Luke's Gospel, chapter number 2, verse number 1. And it came to pass. And it came to pass in those days that they went out a decree from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be taxed. And this taxing was first made when Serenius was governor of Syria. And all went to be taxed, everyone into his own city. And Joseph also went up from Galilee, out of Nazareth, into Judah, unto the city of David, which is called Bethlehem. Because he was of the house and lineage of David. To be taxed with Mary, his espoused wife, being great with child. And so it was that while they were there, the days were accomplished that she should be delivered. And she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swallowing clothing and laid him in a manger. Here it is because there was no room for them in the end because there was no room for them in the end. Come on, look at somebody else. This morning, I want to ask you, do you have room for the gift? I'm not talking about the gifts that you already have prepared for under the tree. But do you have room for Jesus? On last Sunday as we celebrated our 73rd church anniversary and Bishop uh, Jackson preached to us the word of the Lord, uh, her message was, and I, it was as, what's in your house? What was the message that she preached about talking about unto us and explaining to us that God had declared that the glory of the latter house was going to be greater than the glory of the former. And as she was preaching the word of the Lord, uh, she talked to us about how that the gift of God, the spirit of God, God himself, uh, the anointing of God uh, was not necessarily meant to be housed in physical houses, uh, 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 well, I'm sorry, material houses, but rather to be housed in physical housing. In other words, the spirit of God, the power of God, the glory of God is not made for a, a building of bricks and mortar, but the spirit of God, the glory of God is made to dwell within us. The Bible even says on another occasion, he says, I have put this treasure in earthen vessels that the excellency of this power may be of God and not of us. Because what's in your house determines what comes out of your house. That's why it's important for us to understand, even as we are celebrating, amen, on this whole week and this whole weekend and this season, uh, the birth of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, it is important that we understand that if we are going to be what he would have us to be, and if his birth 
coming into the world is going to have the value to our lives that he intended for it to be, we must first make room for him. That cannot be any great revelation of God in your life. There cannot be any great move of God in your life if there is no room for him for your gift. He says, amen, in one of the scriptures that all of us know so very well, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever would believe on him would not perish but have everlasting life i would like to uh, propose to you this morning that the problem that the innkeeper had with mary and joseph is some of the same problem that we have today as people in the earth and that is not fully recognizing the presence of God when he's in your presence that's not understanding and realizing that when Jesus was born when he was coming to the earth that he was coming already as a king he, he was already coming as a savior but because the innkeeper was only looking at the economic of the time and looking around and say first come first serve I, I got a room for everybody that gets here first but when Mary and Joseph got there the Bible says there was no room for them in the end and I want to tell you this morning that God has a way of setting things up God has a way of bringing his word to pass even when it seems like a match it doesn't make sense remember now uh, the Bible Bible tells us that because David rather because Joseph was out of the lineage of David uh, meaning that he, the Lord had declared uh, that the king of glory the king the savior of the world was going to come through the lineage of a man David a man so therefore when the Lord chose Joseph Lord have mercy I know we talk about Mary a lot but when the Lord chose Joseph Joseph, he was keeping his word because the bloodline, amen, came through the man. Y'all ain't helping me here. And so therefore God had declared because Joseph was in the bloodline of David that the king of glory would come through their genealogy. And because he was going to come through their genealogy, he had declared that when he comes through it, that his kingdom would have no end. So Joseph was not somebody who would just haphazardly chosen but Joseph was chosen because it had been written in the scripture that Jesus had to come through the lineage of David it just happened to be a man that because of Mary being exposed to him that caused Mary to come into the glory and to be chosen of God not just because Mary was so good but because Joseph was in the bloodline and the genealogy of King David can I take my time here I promise you I won't take too long it is important then for us to see then that he was living in Nazareth but he was from Bethlehem it, it was not by mistake amen that a Caesar decided that everybody ought to pay taxes it was not by mistake amen at this time that he said you could not pay them from where you are but you had to go to your own home city and pay your taxes unto Caesar why was that so important because it had already been prophesied that when Jesus come on the scene that he was going to be born in Bethlehem so, so no matter what plans that Joseph and Mary had prior to the decree they had to submit to it because it was in the plan of God for the Lord to be born in Bethlehem. I think 
God was trying to see something here because he was trying to realize and trying to see uh, after all of the prophecies that has gone up before concerning me out of all of the things that had been written about me amen in the in the book of the Bible and in the pages of Judaism that when I come when I come are the people going to be able to receive their gift uh -huh. are they going to recognize that I am the one that was prophesied for I was told in the text that I, I was going to be born in Bethlehem so it was seen to me uh, that anybody amen who was looking for Christ should have been looking for him to come out of Bethlehem uh, but when Mo but rather when Joseph and Mary got there uh, the innkeeper said I have no room for you that speaks to a greater problem that speaks to a greater issue and that speaks to what Jesus was going around all his life trying to get people to understand they did not know who he was and when you don't know who he is you cannot receive what he has I gotta say that one more time when you don't know who he is you cannot receive what he has when you don't know who he is you don't recognize the great value that you have sitting before you and so you treat it like it's common you treat it like it's like any other person you treated him amen and said I tell you what I have no room for you even though you are the king of glory can I help you here more animals viewed his birth than people because he had to be born in a stable more animals amen gave more reverence to the birth of Christ than people did the people were so busy doing their own thing the people were so busy going about their own tasks the people were so busy living their own lives that they had no room to stop they had no room amen in their mind they had no room in their spirit to stop and say well maybe Jesus is about to be born because after all there's a star up in the sky that's shining so bright that we've never seen it shine like this before and the word of the Lord said oh, when he come there's going to be a star a shining oh, who is these three wise men that's coming from afar seem like they recognize something that I don't because they are looking for the Christ but I'm going about doing my own thing I have a question this morning is there room for the gift in your life are you so busy doing your own thing are you so busy being cluttered up with the cares of life that you don't recognize that the greatest gift that you could ever receive is not under a tree it's not at Belks it's not at Neiman Marcus it's not at the Gucci store but the best gift that you could ever receive it cannot be received if it does not have no room tell your neighbor give him room give him room, give him room. He needs some room in order to dwell. That's what the room is for. Room is for dwelling. God says, I'm looking for somebody I can dwell in. I'm looking for somebody that Lord have mercy realizes who I am. That's why he kept on asking later even in his life to his disciples, who do men say? say that I am he said some say that are Elias some say that are Moses some say they are John the Baptist oh but when you got a room for him he began to ask the question I hear what they say but I want to know what you say who do you say I am everybody that 
that was around him did not have enough room to realize who he was. But only Peter jumped up and said, Thou art the Christ. Thou art the one that was born in Bethlehem. Thou art the one that the wise men brought gifts. Thou art the one God said flesh and blood did not reveal this to you. But my father which is in heaven. Look at your neighbor and say neighbor the reason why people don't have room is because they're trying to recognize him. But the Lord is never recognized but he's always revealed. Y'all ain't helping me here. The king of glory was at the innkeeper's door but he tried to identify him but he had no revelation that he was the king of glory. He did not recognize that he was the king that came to save the world because he was looking at the package rather than looking inside the package. Tell your neighbor, say neighbor, don't fall in love with the package. You better fall in love with the gift. It's not about the wrapping. It's not about the paper. It's about the gift. And God has given us his only begotten son. God was in flesh reconciling the world to himself. So on this Christmas season, I come to tell you, it's not about you. It's not about me. It's not about them. But it's all about Jesus. Jesus is the reason for the season. Jesus is the gift of God. Ask your neighbor, do you have room? Do you have room? The Lord is saying, I'm still looking for a place I can dwell in. I'm still looking for a place that will receive me. But everywhere I go, I keep hearing there is no room in my ear. Everywhere I go, I keep hearing people say, I don't have time for the Lord. I don't have time to go to church. I don't have time to live holy. I don't have time. I don't have time. I don't have space. I have no dwelling. My life is already full. But I came to tell somebody, you better learn how to throw away the clutter and make room for the gift. Throw away the baggage and make room for the gift. Throw away the sin and make room for the gift. If you believe it, shout, I got room. I got room. I got room. I got room. The Bible declares that he said it's time for the baby to be delivered. And I come to tell you what I love about the word is that when the Lord gets ready for the word in your life to be delivered, it shall be delivered. If it's not in a five star hotel because some of us we were like the animals in the manger but I'm so glad that the Lord he'll find me wherever I am and he will say it's time for my word to come forth so you gotta come out 
of where you are because my word is coming forth and it cannot be stopped Jesus said that they don't receive me in the end that don't mean I'm going to delay my coming but I'm coming to this earth to save my people from their sins and I'm so glad that the Lord said if the hierarchy don't want me if I have no room in this hotel just give me some place I can lay my head just give me some place that I can be born just give me some place that I can dwell in that's why I'm so glad that God was showing us through his own birth experience that it doesn't matter where you are or who you are it doesn't matter if you're rich or if you're poor it doesn't matter if you're black or if you're white it doesn't matter if you're up high or down low but I heard the song say it reaches to the highest mountain and it flows to the lowest valley wherever I am God say if you make room I'll lift you up God say wherever you are in your life if you make room I'll give you joy unspeakable and full of glory I can hear him declare that I will be your peace if you make room let me dwell let me dwell in your house that's what the Lord is saying I'm looking for room I'm looking for room I'm looking for room I'm looking for some room over 2,000 years later he's still looking for a room he's still looking for somewhere he can dwell somewhere he can take a boat somewhere where he can abide that's what Christmas is all about Jesus abiding with us and I heard Jesus even say it like this I'm standing at the door and I'm knocking if it, you gotta let me I'm, I'm knocking because I'm looking for a place where I can dwell But when I go to your house, you got no vacancies. When I go to some, no vacancies. Going over here, no vacancies. But what you doing? I, my, I would, got wood, but I, I, mean, I just ain't got time. I'm so busy trying to make this money. I, I'm so busy trying to do this. I'm, I, I, I would, but I ain't got time. I don't have no room for him. And the only reason why people are saying they don't have a room because they don't know the value of the gift. If you knew the value of who Jesus was, he said, he said the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life if you knew the value of the gift he said no weapon formed against you shall be able 
the prosper. If you know the value of the gift, he said, because I have overcome the world, you have overcome the world also. So he keeps on telling us to trust in the Lord with all thine heart. Lean not to your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge me. Because this gift, it will direct your path. Do you have room for the gift? Lord have mercy. And this gift, you didn't pay for it. He paid the price. And he said, this gift gives you redemption and gives you life. And he says, I want you to know that this gift, you, know, you are not redeemed with precious metals, precious gold, silver, money. But you was redeemed by the precious blood of the Lamb. If you take Christ out of Christmas, all you have is a mess. And that's what we have become. We become a mess. Why you say that, Pastor? Because if I don't get what I want under the tree, I'm going to act a fool. If I, don't, if I don't think you spent enough money on me. If I don't think... And you know why we act like that? Because we value ourselves more than we value him. And we think we ought to give good gifts. Well, how in the world you want a gift from Nemo Marcus and when you don't want a gift from glory? Because ain't nothing on this earth can compare to the glory that shall be revealed in us when we make room for Jesus. So if I don't know about you, but just having the Lord in my life, it's been worth it all. The gift of God, he said this morning. I'm going to sing this whole song. I know y'all probably don't know, but y'all try to, try to catch it if you can. If heaven was never promised to me, neither land where I will live eternally is been worth just having the Lord in my life. I was living in a world of darkness, but he brought me the light. If there was never any streets of gold, neither a land where I will never grow old, I can raise my hand and say, Lord, it's been worth just having the Lord in my life. Because I was living in the world of darkness, but you brought me the light. The gift of God is looking for room. So all this Christmas season, he still just have the same question that Joseph had when he was at the end. Is there room for the word to be delivered? Is there room for the child to be born?
is the rule for the Lord in your life. While we're making room for everything else, make room for Jesus. I got to go, but, but if, if I would take it further, he say, do you not know that your body is a temple for the Holy Ghost? Do you not know you were born for me to dwell? The Lord is saying this morning, make room for the gift. Clap your hands, somebody give God praise. Come on, clap your hands and give God praise so this morning. Come on, you could do better than that. Clap your hands and if you know he's living in your life, you know you've made room for him. Come on, just stand up and give God a great praise. Come on, give God a great praise for being the Lord of your soul. For being the Savior. You got the greatest gift. Come on, give God praise this morning. I say you have the greatest gift. Come on and give God praise this morning. As we move into the new year, we examine ourselves. We examine our priorities. We examine what it is that Christ is asking from us and what it is that we are looking for from him and i promise you that you will get a much clearer view and a more decisive answer if you make room and let him dwell let him talk to you let him order your steps he says, I've come that you might have this life. The reason why I'm here is because of you. Jesus said, we got to go. Raise your hands with me. Lord, we thank you for your goodness. Lord, we thank you for your grace for all your blessings Lord you have shown us and for this we give you praise and for this we give lord we thank you for your goodness lord we thank you for your grace for all your blessings Lord, down through the year, you have shown us. And for this, we give you praise. And for this, we give. Lord, in the name of Jesus, while we're standing with our hands raised, we say, Lord, look down now upon our hearts, minds, souls, and spirits. We thank you, Lord, for who you are, for knowing who you are. We thank you, Lord, for your presence. We thank you for your gift. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son thank you for your gift Jesus thank you for redeeming us out of the hands of the enemy 
not only redeeming us but thank you for your healing virtue thank you for your peace that surpasses all understanding thank you lord for your strength thank you for your mercies that are new every morning thank you for your grace and mercy that shall follow us all the days of our lives thank you lord for dwelling in our house we have room for your gift we have room for you jesus so we say heal us now deliver us now set the captives free send strength to those who are weak let the weak say that i am strong let the poor say i am rich in the name of jesus you left your throne of glory to bring to us redemption story and it started out in a manger started out in a manger in a barn because the end said they had no more room but lord we have room today in the name of jesus we give you praise clap your hands somebody give god come on clap your hands and give him praise on this morning in this season remember the lord in this season remember jesus god bless you on this morning have a smile upon you is our prayer we hope and pray that the word of the lord has been a blessing to you and we pray amen that the word of the lord will carry you on through this day and through this season now remember on next sunday is the sunday after christmas this is sunday after christmas so we will have service on next sunday but we will all just have one service on next sunday and that service will be at 11 o'clock so on next sunday morning it will not be 8 30 service just the 11 o'clock service the sunday after christmas again and also for all the auxiliary leaders and all of those who work with auxiliaries we will be having a meeting uh, planning for our upcoming year uh on after service on next sunday so we look for everyone that's a part of any auxiliary to be a part of those meetings on next sunday again one service next sunday at 11 o'clock the day after christmas amen god bless you as we tithe and give in today's offering we believe and thank the lord for walking in divine health and healing walking in god's favor blessings and increase in every area of my life for jobs and better jobs raises and bonuses sales and commission multiple streams of income estates and inheritances good grades in school interest and income rebates and returns stock options finding big money checks in the mail bills paid off debts demolished and royalties received with your offers lifted on this morning we declare every blessing upon those your people of god we declare your strength we declare your help we pray god that there be no lack in any household for meet us all at the point of our need and even as we are celebrating you christ even in this season let us be mindful of who you are and what you've done for us down through the year in jesus name every heart said amen if you need to get by way of debit or credit cards you can come to my left someone will assist you with those giving those of you who are giving by way of electronics you can go to cash app to the mount and give there or give the fine mount sinai and give there there should be ways on the screen as we speak as we declare the blessings of the lord be upon you in jesus name we're just going to ask you come from wherever you are and give according to how the lord has blessed and prospered you in the name of the lord This is Pastor Monroe again, inviting you to follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat, and Twitter. 
looking forward to you following us.